Well, so our good friend John Lennon has been shorn. Yes. How does it feel? It feels quite comfortable out here. Uh, it's yeah. not too short, though. I don't know. I was telling uh, uh, Michael before that you look a little like Bob Dylan this way. Have you noticed it? Uh, Anybody uh, else tell you that? Two people have said it. It's because yeah. my hair's standing on end. It's it's uh, it's very becoming, John. Honestly, yeah. I think it's easy to get used to. Huh? It's quite easy to get used to. It's full of sand and all rubbish, you know. Think it'll take uh, long to grow back? No. It looks quite normal at night when I comb it. If I can get my comb through it, you know, you wouldn't know it wasn't just the back shorter and no sideboards. This uh, must surely be one of the most unusual locations in the world, John. I wonder if you could describe it and tell us exactly where we are and what's going on here. <laughs> You're asking me where we are. Well, you know, as far as I know, we're somewhere in Spain. It could be anywhere, for all I know, actually. And it's just like a... I don't know, it's like a dump, really. It's like the moon, you know, just desert and sand and hills and mountains. But not very nice to look at, but the weather's OK now and then. Beautiful weather. What a perfect spot for this picture, I guess. This is supposed to represent what? North Africa, and I believe it's pretty similar. Mm. First dramatic role, huh, John? Well, dramatic's a good word. <laughs> First role, really. The others were just messing about. How do you take to it? How does it come to you? Well, sometimes it comes hard, and sometimes it comes easy. You know, it depends on the day. Do you, do you like it? Do you find it natural to, to be an actor? Well, some of it's natural. The most unnatural bits are, are hard, you know, the ones that are really out of character from me. And, uh, but it, it, it's all right, you know, but it's not, it's not the be-all and end-all for me. But you do like it. You like to do more of it, huh? I think I'd do limited amounts of stuff. Because I, I am limited in what I could do. You know. Really? You don't know until you try? No, I don't, but I'd, I don't want to be trying myself out in films. It's too public. It's true. Did you know you could write before you wrote? Uh, well, I didn't think about it because I was always writing. See? Just sort of naturally. Mm. But you're, in other words, the acting thing is still a new thing for you. Just mm. trying your wings, kind of. Yes, it's really trying my wings. It'd be fascinating to see what happens. Can you talk about your character, John? Who do you play? Well, it's a private soldier called Gripweed. He's not particularly nice. No, but he's, he's not too horrible, but he's, he's just uh, looking after himself all the time. That's the main thing. And what relationship do you have to the other people in the film? Well, none, really. See, we don't really have much of a relationship. No, it's not, we're not fighting or anything. We, we don't sort of have a lot to say directly to each other. And, uh, well, I'm Michael Crawford's Batman. He's off as a good body. And I'm meant to look after him, you know, but I spend most of the time not looking after him and trying to dodge it. Kind of mess things up a little bit, huh? Yeah, it's a bit like that. That's a different connotation for the word Batman. You know, in America, we have a television series. Oh, I know. There. We got it in Britain, too. You got it here, too. Yeah. Lots of luck with it. <laughs> but it means, it really means an aide here or a helper, doesn't it? Bat a, a Batman. Oh, yeah, that's just the, the usual army term for the fellow that crawls about looking after the officer. You know, yes, sir, no, sir, certainly, sir. Yeah. And you got who else in this cast? That was Lee Montague and, uh, well, there's Jack Headley. Roy Kinnear, now let me think, Michael Horton, of course, yeah, and Ronnie Lacey, he's a great lad. Nicole. They're all great lads to work with, you know, it sounds like one of them tapes. And you're yeah. right here with your old buddy Dick Lester again, huh? Yes, yes, he's all right. <laughs> you certainly established a style, John, with your fellas, you know. Well, I think, mm, he has, doesn't he? I mean, the, the individuality of, of you guys, as well as his uniqueness as a director, it really was a great marriage in both pictures so far, you know. I think it's exciting that he's directing you in your first role away from the group. Well, I wouldn't have accepted, probably, if it hadn't been him. I would have been too nervous. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I could... I quite... You know, I can make a fool of myself in front of him because I know him. But if it had been some other director saying, do this and do that, I would have mm -hmm. fallen apart. What what does this character give you a chance to do, and in, in what light does it show you, as you know, as opposed to anything you've done in the past? Well, it just is completely opposed to anything I've done in the past. No, I'm just a different person in it, yeah, and I'm just nothing like people have seen me before, really. Is that why you took the part? I took it because I was interested in the film and interested in trying my wings at something else, and uh, I felt like doing something for a change, you know. And this just happened to come up at a time when I felt in that mood, you know. What generally does the film deal with How I Won the War, without giving away any of the plot? Well, I don't know. It's very hard to generalise. It's a strange film. 
uh, it's just I can't really say you know I can't there's nothing to say it's just about these people in the war together or not together you know, that's all I can think a British squadron yes it could be any squadron it could be any soldiers anywhere where have you been filming so far we've been to Germany with there two weeks filming on the NATO grounds whoopee mm -hmm. and then we came out here does this mean that all of the boys are going to be trying different things as you go along, John? Well, I can't speak for the others, you know, but George has just got back from India, trying India. I saw a picture of him with a moustache the other day picking up that teacher of the sitar at London Airport. Oh, yeah, he was, he came, he travelled with him, I think, from yeah. India, that's his teacher. He flipped over that instrument, didn't he? Well, yeah, well, that fellow that's teaching him is one of the all-time greats, you know, yes. so he was lucky that, that the fellow would accept him as a pupil. He doesn't just have anybody. Will you be using the sitar as a regular sound, as a regular part of the future? No, release? I mean, that's, the sitar just happens to have come in useful on a couple of tracks, but it's really nothing to do with it, you know, that's George's own scene. It won't be a part of the regular uh, albums or records, no, necessarily? No, unless it's called for. Yeah. When I is mean, it called influences. for? When is it called for? I don't know when you suddenly think, a oh, sitar will be nice here. No, George will obviously write more numbers where the sitar's involved if he feels like it. You know what's marvelous, John, in the last couple of years? The wonderful, wonderful songs that have come out of you and Paul and that really have established you in the complete universal audience as what you always were, great songwriters, you know, Thanks, Michelle, sir. you know, and Yesterday's and all. It's just wonderful standards. And as you know, everybody's done them from Count Basie to Ella Fitzgerald, which is, <coughs> must be a great satisfaction for you. It is, you? you know, it's great to see, great doing them, to see how they do it, too. Because, you know, with the initial, I remember when the first time we met, and as always when a new group cracks through, the skeptics, the doubters, and so forth, to finally the proof, which was always there, finally, you know, everybody realized, hey, wow, these guys really are great songwriters, you know? Something that you knew all the time. But then oh, we did marvelous really standards. Know, you don't know until <clears throat> till it happens. But nobody thought you could write songs like Michelle and Yesterday. No, because they, they were too busy just looking at the Beatle image. You know? yeah. There'll be more ballads like that coming out, you think? Yeah, but there's usually, they're always there, you know, they just come out. You like the soft things like that, or...? Yeah, relax? I like it. You Getting know. romantic in your old age, huh? Eh? I've always had a bit of romantic in me, you know. <laughs> they, I, they, they're so haunting, you know. And I believe it's only the beginning, isn't it, John? I hope songwriting. so. I hope so, you know, we're only still fairly young, especially as musicians or songwriters. Where's the inspiration come from, or is it just craftsmanship? I mean, can you just sit down at a given time and say, we have to write now? And out it comes. Well, sometimes it comes out. You know, sometimes they say, now you must write, and now we write. Oh, but it doesn't come. Some days we sit there for days, just talking to each other, messing around, not doing anything. How was Michelle written? Uh, well, Paul had had this idea about writing a bit with some of the language, with French in it. And he just sort of had a bit of a, I don't know, a verse and a couple of words and the idea. I, thought, I think he had some other name or something. Oh, he used to call it... He used to talk double Dutch French, you see, just to sing the bit. Jean-Li, Rancy, Rancy, like that. So yeah. he had that, and then he just brought it along. We sort of started fiddling around trying to get a middle eight. We pinched a little bit from somewhere and stuck it in the middle eight, and off we went. What about yesterday's? Yesterday, is Paul completely on his own, really. We just helped finishing off the ribbons around it, you know, tying it up. I'm delighted to see that uh, your last tour was such a smash for you, you know, in view of the pressure that you were under. I was thrilled that it came out as well as it did, you know. Just, <laughs> I was uh, pleased, Ms. Elsa. Uh, such a ridiculous thing happened uh, uh, on this experience that you had. I want to know, just to wrap this thing up, what kind of reflections you had on that whole thing, John? Well, now it's just like a bad dream, you know. It's, it's just way in the back of my mind somewhere, and it just comes back when you read things just odd things that crop up now and then like cardinal so-and-so says it's okay mm -hmm. <laughs> or things like that but it's really way in the back of my mind like what fr frightening implications of thing like that it could happen to anybody you know yeah not just famous people but what a mm. frightening implication when things like that can be used to hurt a person yes it's a pretty amazing scene that was it was very frightening. It's really, you know, like the McCarthy era or mm. any kind of wildly out of context. It's just right? certain things seem to whip up certain emotions and at certain times as well. When are you going to be doing uh, another tour, do you know? No idea. I know we've got music to write as soon as we get back. And Paul's just signed us up to write the music for a film. 
So I suppose it's off the plane and into bed and knock, 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 get up and write some songs. A film that's not your own? Yes. Very exciting. Uh, all in good time with... They've made it. Now, what's the name? What's the name of her in it? Hayley Mills. Hayley Mills, that's it. She's in it. Marvelous. So Bert Bacharach's going to have a little competition, huh? Uh, it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right, John. Just finally now. What do you think the audience can expect now from How I Won the War? What have we got to look forward to? Aside from seeing John Lennon in his first dramatic role, of course. Well, I mean, that's, I'm incidental. The thing you've got to look forward to is seeing a great film, I hope. The way it's going, it seems to be fine. And if it gets out and on the road, it should, you know, it should be a great film. One thing, they'll be able to see with a peeled nose for the first time. Yeah, they'll be able to see a lot of things for the first time. <laughs> it's exciting, John, and I'm delighted to talk to you again in such a place that really does look like the moon. I guess this is what it must be like. They told us it was dusty, and it is dusty. It is. You come on a good day. It's always good to see you, Johnny. Okay, Fred. See I hope you soon again. Uh, I hope next time you'll have a smash movie score to your credit. Well, that'll be nice. I don't know where the new challenges can come from, though, you know. They're always there, believe me. There's always something going on. It's important to have a new challenge, though, isn't it, when you yeah. made it like this, for example? Yeah. To see if you can conquer it, I guess. Mm. There'll be many more. If, if this turns out the way you want it, will you do other acting roles, you think, John? Well, I don't know. I can sit back and think, oh, well, I don't need to, you know, I don't know what I'll do. I didn't know I was going to do this, really, till I did it. You know, I don't think too far ahead. But or plan, I mean. Will all the guys go out and do things on their own now, do you think? Well, if they feel like, you know, if there's something to do. I think it's time to spread your wings. Why not? Yeah, there's you lots know. to be done, you know. You got the store going for you all the time. And then whatever else you want to do on the side. Yeah, we'll just try our best at whatever we're doing, the main thing. It's always great to see you, Johnny. Ditto, Fred. See you. <coughs> this is John Lennon saying goodbye from the set in Almeria, Spain, of how I won the war. ta -da, well. Bye. Let me get that from John, uh, the... the this new guise of yours with the shorter hair, yeah. uh, has it given you some kind of joy, or some sadistic joy in the privacy you've been able to enjoy? Well, you know, I, I was, went around Palace, the flea market, and went on a bus there and did all things I hadn't done for a long time. It was great. Nobody recognised you? Uh, one or two people did double takes, you know, but it was, they, you know, nobody knew at all. It was shorter than this then. They thought, what, what's Bob Dylan doing over here? <laughs> no, I didn't, it looked, didn't look like him then, because I did plastered down. That's a sweet joy, isn't it, John, to be able to have a little privacy once in a while. Yeah, it was great. I was knocked out. You know? yeah. Especially even here, you know, being so far away, nobody to bother you except guys like myself occasionally, but nobody's going to dare come down here and talk to you. Huh? Uh, there's nobody around here. You know, they don't, nobody knows. Can't go in the town here, though. Have any of the guys ever resorted to disguises to be able to go someplace on Well, I just heard the other day that Paul was at some place in London disguised as an Arab. <laughs> but I, don't know where, I don't know whether it's true or not, but he used to say that was the, the only way you could really disguise yourself was as, a, as an Arab. So, But if he did, he got caught. I don't think anybody will recognise George with his moustache now. Oh, they got him because they got him in India. There's a, one of those shots you can see, they've caught him coming out of a door, and he had a moustache. And uh, it just said George Harrison in disguise. Yeah. Well, all you have to do now is put a little, maybe a babushka on or a neckerchief or wear, keep your hair the mm. way it is, and, uh, you know, you can go around like an ordinary human being. Well, to an extent. You know, go on to record stores and see what the reaction is to the new records and things. Yeah, it's not that easy, you know. I mean, they still know your face, that's the point. Yeah. People that do know spot your face even if you're wearing a pith helmet. That's what happens, I guess. Mm. Never get away from it, John. I'll smash my face in. God forbid. <laughs> so.